against that's Alta has slammed Sanrail's decision to prosecute motorists for not paying their e-toll accounts. Two prosecutors have been appointed after talks between the National Roads Agency and the National Prosecuting Agency. Alta spokesperson Wayne Duvenay joins us in studio to discuss this issue further. Wayne, thank you for being our guest and welcome to the program. Good morning. What do you make of this latest development? Well, as we've said, it's, we think it's very wrong. Um, what you have uh, is, is, you know, our constitution requires that our, um, our, our states of organ, both senior at, at national level and at regional level and local, work in harmony with each other. And you have David Makura's panel, which is opening up negotiations, trying to find solutions to this problem at a regional level. And that door is being slammed shut by the national level with Sanral wanting to prosecute motorists. We believe that e-tolling has been introduced unlawfully. We have on record that we're willing to go to court and prove this. And uh, yet they're going down this process of trying to intimidate people, really, yeah. into getting uh, becoming compliant. Yeah. Is, is that was my question to you. Is this a form of intimidation? Because just bringing it about is not working. Billing people is not working. I yeah. mean, we've seen the figures, we've seen the numbers yeah. of the amount of people that are paying versus those that aren't paying. Yeah. So again, this intimidation, yeah. do you think it'll convince motorists? Look, it might convince a few people. There's a lot of confusion out there. But on the whole, you have a user pays system trying to be forced into place where you have less than half the users paying. That's a recipe for disaster. What we're saying, and you see they, they throw carrots at the situation. They, they a little while ago threw in a discount. Now again, yesterday, the ministers announced a reprieve. You can pay your bills longer before it goes into the VPC process. I mean, uh, the, the analogy I can liken this to is trying to do an engine overall on a car while it's moving. They mm. need to stop and take this engine out. They need to get the public compliance and buy-in. Without that, they've lost, they've lost the people. So it's not going to work. Um, they are threatening uh, motorists in, in a very intimidating way, and I, and I think they're just going to lose the people more. Yeah. This is certainly not a healthy situation for any state to be in where the, where the government is fighting with its citizens in yeah. this way. What about the fuel levy? I mean, everybody is talking about mm. an introduction <coughs> of a fuel yeah. levy to cover the costs. Yes. Is this the route that it you is, are proposing? It is the most efficient uh, way to, to pay for infrastructure of this nature, yeah. and I'll tell you why. The administration costs in a fuel levy are zero, compared to an e-tolling administration cost, which is over a billion rand a year. This country could do well with that billion rand a year going into other infrastructure matters. The other thing about a fuel levy is you have 100% compliance, literally 100% compliance, whereas in e-tolling, as we can see, we don't have that compliance. So you have a massive cost associated with chasing people to try and get this money back. Uh, the, the only argument they have, and by the way, it's a user pays uh, a fuel levy, it's a user pays mechanism as well. Every time you start your vehicle, you are contributing towards the roads. Uh, so the only problem they've got is, well, why should the rest of the country pay for Gauteng's roads? But we keep saying these are South Africa's roads. Mm. The rest of the country benefits immensely from what happens here in Gauteng, getting yeah. people to and from work, goods to and from markets and so forth. So what, we just cannot understand why, you want to, why they want to force this uh, square peg into this round hole. It's not going to work. Yeah. But what about introducing, which has been spoken about, mm -hmm. um, uh, just a, a provincial uh, fuel tax in terms of in mm. Kharteng, we already pay a bit more yeah. in inland petrol yeah. prices than we yeah. do at the coast. Look, you can you can manipulate the inland fuel levy if you want to put more of the pressure onto Kharteng. Uh, that's not going to be a problem. Having, introducing regional fuel levies can be quite dangerous okay. because because then you'll have Mpumalanga and Limpopo and other provinces starting to try and justify why they need a higher fuel levy. This needs to be handled on a national basis into the national fuel levy. That's where it's collected and distributed. Yeah. Talk to me about this, this newly launched rule of law campaign. Well, what we launched on Thursday in anticipation for the fact that we knew that the, the prosecution process was going to unfold is to, is to be able to say to government and to the people, first of all, ATA has indicated it will be here to, to assist in the first uh, prosecution because we want the precedent to be set, we want the case to be heard that we have presented, which was set aside on a technicality before uh, around condemnation of the time it took for us to bring that matter to court. And those in, in admin administrative law, they can set our case aside, which they did after our, after our interdict. But those matters cannot be set aside in a criminal case, mm. uh, where the judge has to take cognizance of the fact that it could very well be, and this is our argument, that e-tolling has been introduced, that declaration has been introduced unlawfully. And that is, if you do not consult meaningfully with the people, give them the right to impact on that decision, 
it is not right. That is a constitutional right and even in the Sanral Act. Further to that, there are a number of factors that were not considered when they made this decision, one of them being uh, alternatives such as the fuel levy and the costs of collection, which are massively different to what were presented to the minister at the time. When the judge unpacks that, so this matter needs to go to the High Court and, and we made, and they need to make a decision. Until they do that, they will not get the people on board. Yeah. All right. Just, just finally, this panel mm -hmm. that's been announced, mm. the members on the panel, um, do you think it's going to make a difference? Do you think that this panel will perhaps yeah. come up with findings that... You know, well, we uh, hope so. You, I suppose, so we all yeah, hope for they, an outcome, a positive outcome. Yeah, they're, they're very, they're, they're, they're very astute. They've got all the credentials. There's no doubt that they've got a lot to sift through. Um, but it is at a regional level. The decision needs to be made at a national level. We hope that they will then give the information and the recommendations through to both uh, David Makura, the Premier, as well as national level, and, and some decisions, some sensible decisions mm. can be made so that we can move forward as a nation in building this country, not destroying it the way we are right yeah. now. So I suppose the big question is to pay or not to pay? I think uh, this is the time for civil courage. This is the time to stand strong. The message is getting home, and um, people must continue to do what they've been doing. And that's not pay. Well, it's their decision not to pay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Wayne Duvenay, thank you for talking to us.